Hello everybody, uh, this is uh, EGOV News and this is our uh, Friday talk. Uh, today uh, we have a kind of a after Christmas special. <laughs> well, Happy New Year, Lucas. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year to you. you. And uh, today we'll be talking about something which uh, gets a bit of a hype, uh, which is uh, the new episode of Black Mirror on Netflix called Bandersnatch. Yeah, it's yeah. an interactive um, sort of, I suppose, TV program or yeah. interactive episode of Black Mirror. It was quite uh, something. I spent hours watching it over the Christmas. What about you? Uh, so, uh, following your recommendation, <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh, check it out. Uh, and it's very interesting because it seems like uh, it brings new quality to the entertainment industry. And mm -hmm. uh, But to be honest, uh, it's not an entirely new idea. Like, i seen some similar solutions in the 90s. You know, there was... Uh, it was in the game industry, basically, you mm. had uh, things like so-called uh, Phantasmagoria. Mm -hmm. It was an interactive uh, video game, which was pretty much a video, interactive video, where you would make choices yeah. as you do. So for those who don't know, uh, so first of all, Black Mirror. Black Mirror is a sci-fi TV series on Netflix, and it looks at all kind of uh, future... Uh, near future uh, challenges yeah in, in, in a case, dark kind of a, way in that kind of way especially related mm -hmm. to technology uh, it's focused on technology and uh, the newest uh, kind of innovation in this series is they actually provided an interactive movie mm -hmm. where you can decide what to do next yeah and when yeah. you make a choice you say yes or no basically and, and yeah. it's two choices I think binary sort of thing uh, well and it's it not it's mm -hmm. not always yes or no. You can. Is it not? Well, there's different yeah? two, two options. Two options. Yeah. And it takes so. you in a different. It shows you a different. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose scene depending mm -hmm. on which choice you choose. Isn't that the way it works? Yeah. Some you have more options. I remember that you have to select a number, and you have like all the numbers from zero to ten. That's true. Yeah. But so, potentially, you yeah. know, if if these are to continue, the, mm -hmm. these sort of. Um, mm -hmm. You know, interactive TV programs or interactive mm -hmm. uh, films or whatever they are. I, I suspect they're going to catch on yeah. because I think the technology is there now. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, it's like a first attempt, I guess, to see how people react. And mm. I guess it uh, generated really a lot of fuss. And by the way, I switched from uh, coffee to uh, Shagba Mate. <laughs> so Argentinian drink, very good. I'm on the water. Mm -hmm. New Year's resolution and all that. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's very tasty. But you know... Back back in back in my day, I mean, I was involved in video games in the in the eighties, you know, and and it sort of reminded me of that time, and it was sort of we call them adventure games, mm -hmm. you know, and this idea where you make choices and you had to take different routes, and mm -hmm. depending on your routes, certain mm -hmm. outcomes, but you'd win the game, you know, you get to the treasure or whatever, depending on which choices you took mm -hmm. along the way, and th those were quite a, a big thing in the eighties because they were sort of more text based games. Whereas yeah. now things have got so sort of visual, technology, yeah, you know, yeah. focused that you can't really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. come back to that. But Bandersnatch, really, the you know, it was going back to those days. Mm -hmm. So it's sort sort of almost modelled on one of those adventure games. Mm -hmm. So I suppose what we're seeing is we're sort of seeing the sort of forerunner of these sort of interactive TV things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they'll get a lot more complicated and a lot more sophisticated as time goes on. Yeah, and I think there'll be more options to explore. But why are we talking about it in Ego of News, right? So we say, okay, this is entertainment. And uh, of course, uh, it's very entertaining <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to, to, to interact with the movie uh, in this way. You feel a bit... Uh, not like, like you feel like you can decide about people's fate inside, no? Mm. A bit like so. Uh, if you ever played Sims and you can manipulate with uh, with figures there, it, I think it feels a bit like that, right? That, it's uh, sort of merging, yeah, I suppose, yeah. computer games with more realistic um, technology. Yeah. You know, with, with with video or with television. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, I mean, people can see a graph behind us here of, of, of all the different options yeah, and yeah. how they work, you but know. But before we get there, so what we what we try to explore in today's video is that, uh, today's stream, is uh, the potential use for uh, serious applications. So mm -hmm. we can say, okay, uh, if we can visualize multiple scenarios, uh, can it be used for the governments, by the governments or um, you know, other governance mm -hmm. entities? to show potential uh, implications of decisions. <laughs> so for instance, you know, uh, the famous wall, yeah, build a wall, not to build a wall, or uh, I don't know what else, uh, very, very difficult decision. Of, uh, yeah, that you could have sort yeah. of multiple views, take yeah. different people's views, I suppose yeah. you could take a box And, and visualize them and enable people to see, you know, mm. the implications and various different implications based mm. on several different decisions. Uh, so we say maybe there is a interesting way here to simulate potential scenarios as you know like in in our way of research right like we mm. generate a lot of scenarios mm. when we developed new prototype tools and so yeah. on right and we follow scenario based design 
mm. and we work with those scenarios with our stakeholders uh, in collective intelligence sessions and that's how we uh, iteratively develop the emerging new technologies uh, prototypes right and now could we somehow merge these two together we have the yeah. interactive scenarios I suppose a video yeah. aid for yeah. systems thinking yeah. or, or systems yeah. uh, decision making mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it. It makes sense. I mean it does make sense. I mean I think yeah. I think we're a long way from getting to that point mm -hmm. because the difficulty would be, mm -hmm. um, you know, where to slot in the mm -hmm. the next scene of video, mm -hmm. you know, or or if you're doing vox pops from the public, for example, mm -hmm. and using them uh, to decide on whether you want a wall, mm -hmm. um, you know, you could sort of do it in a sort of interactive focus group, as yeah. it were. But it'd be difficult. Still, mm -hmm. there'd be a way of manipulating it. Whoever's designing the actual structure, um, you know, and gives you the options. Yeah, but mm. well, I suppose you can have multiple options. So mm. I suppose there, there there might be a way of doing it. So maybe there will be a way to create, you know, uh, several options based on uh, different views, as you mm. said, like you know, mm. different people, different sites, and, and different views, and their different own arguments. Views. Yeah, and they construct like their own version, and they can be explored uh, by by either side, you know, yeah. to see yeah. to see what's going on. And uh, I don't know if you can recall any other example. Maybe you know the climate, for instance, mm. or the, the green technologies that should be used to maybe. Mm. Uh, slower down the, the, the climate change or something like this, right? So, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the, the, the problem that our colleague uh, Augustin is investigating, the bees problem, right? The bees yeah. are dying and we discussed it actually in one of the uh, previous programs, right? Uh, so, for instance, what decisions, uh, which decisions may lead to, let's say, successful mm. uh, outcome and which one will create a disaster or something, you know? But not necessarily a disaster because there might be uh, better maybe both good yeah. options for instance or multiple different options but they lead to different outcomes right mm. so what do we do for instance to save bees and then there is multiple ways to do so and what will be the implications right mm. no? yeah you're you're we're, yeah. We're, we're basing the future on black mirror i think yeah. but you know i mean <laughs> yeah it's the bees episode yeah. was also about black mirror yeah. Well, we have a very special guest joining us here. Mirror, Brendan Mirror. Smith. Oh, we're, we're live on TV. Come in, Brendan Smith. Brendan, Brendan, come you can Brendan come over. Too we're discussing much, interactive... Um, yeah. Interactive uh, videos and yes. the, la the latest Black Mirror episodes. And so, the possibility yes. of using them for dis live decision making. Yeah, yes. So, Brendan, yes. we like so to come in, come in and join yeah. us here, Brendan. No, I would love to, but Wait. I'm actually, uh, I, I have to meet this guy and I do apologize. But I'm going to be back with you next week anyway. And, I, and we're going to do that Talking training with session. Virtual reality. Yeah, exactly, about VR. So, so I, apologies about this. So you got this man's looking for me. You got the disclosure now uh, of the next episode. Which exactly. will be next oh, Friday. I gave too I'm much information away. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Listen, I'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah. Definitely. Enjoy Take your care. coffee. Take care. Yeah. Take care. So you see, uh, the next the next big thing is VR. <laughs> Maybe VR and decision Well, can VR sure. yeah. fit into this whole scenario as well? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's uh, that would really take it up to another level, I think, if you had yeah. virtual reality uh, video mm -hmm. along with, um, you know, the whole interactive um, mm -hmm. video making mm -hmm. in terms of decision making. I mean, I, th I think we're moving very far ahead of the game here. Yeah. But I mean, you know, back to Black Mirror. I mean, mm. do you think it worked as a as a spectacle in itself? Uh, I think it did. Uh, I think it creates some kind of a disruption in the market. And I mm. think it's kind of going back to, as I say, those concepts that already emerged in the 90s, but they were not picked up for various reasons, because, you know, uh, the computers were not as ubiquitous as today, and, mm. you know, people were not as techy as today. Mm. And I think it's the right moment to kind of uh, innovate and converge Mm. Uh, you know, different things. So you have the convergence between the game mm -hmm. uh, industry and the movie industry, right? Suddenly, yeah. suddenly the, 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 the border between what is a movie and what is a game is blurred and we have this new interactive TV. Yeah. So we see this a bit in the live shows, right? So people can call, people can send uh, messages mm. to uh, kind of influence what's going on, right? To, 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 to make a selection or who is winning yeah. or who is losing. But now I think it gets into different level, yeah. So, well, know. what do you think about you know would it work for movies, for example? Mm -hmm. I mean, could you have a, a movie in a, in a cinema? I mean, obviously you'd have to have all the, the buttons on every seat, and it or would maybe people on can use democracy. their smartphone. People can use their smartphones. Well, possibly. And some app, basically, and you know, the whole the audience. Okay. And so then it goes up to fifty yeah, percent so. for this decision or fifty. <laughs> so I don't know. People are watching Star Wars. And yeah. uh, you know, in the cinema, and then there is the make your decision, and then there is a poll. In the Will cinema. Darth Vader die? Will he live? And you have a poll in the cinema, and maybe 
the the session you watch in the specific room will be will end very different from next room, you know? Yeah. Where they screen the Star Wars as well. But well, the, the audience decided differently. Well the interesting yeah. thing about that yeah. is I mean, you yeah. know, people might want to go back and see those again and again. Yeah. Because you'd see a different film every time you went back. Yeah. So you can have a multiple multiple versions. But also going back to the to the topic, so we said, okay, how we can use it now for uh for governance and maybe for mm -hmm. serious applications. Uh, so wh again, what do you, what do you think, Neil? Like you know, you have you have background in politics. So would you say that that would be a way to kind of bring decision making closer to the citizen? I think if you did it in such a way yeah. that you know you'd obviously mm -hmm. have to give control to people right. to some extent. You know that that you couldn't just have it that that it was edited by an individual mm -hmm. because that wouldn't be multiple decision making. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, for example, I was thinking of Brexit or the mm -hmm. Trump's oh, wall or something. You know, know. So, yeah. How would the you current current affairs, current problems? Yeah, we have. Like, a, yeah, let, yeah, let's take Trump's yeah. wall. I mean, mm -hmm. how would you decide? How would you get past the impasse that they have at the moment in terms that the government, um, you know, the American government isn't uh, giving funding. Mm -hmm. It's it's breaking down at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the longest ever mm -hmm. um, time when when a budgetary decision hasn't been made, I mm -hmm. think. And, you know, at the moment they can't decide whether to give funding for this mm -hmm. wall or not. I mean, how would you how would you use this sort of technology to actually mm -hmm. um, get past that impasse, do you think? So, yeah, so, so my idea, as I say, in this case will be, okay, let's generate all possible scenarios mm -hmm. and be very agnostic about it so no yeah. any you know uh, so every view every view should be kind of addressed mm -hmm. you know and all the challenges and risks involved and implications and uh, yeah design a structure a, a kind of a, a scenario a kind of video or, or simulation yeah. where people can really come and, and, and explore and maybe learn also so I think a new way of uh, educating people Mm. on the implications of decision making. So for instance, going back to Brexit, if for instance a video like that was made before the counter-referendum, would it influence the, the, the vote? Like for instance, if the events that we witness today and all the challenges that you know emerge mm. would be visualized in those scenarios, would people think differently? You know? Yeah, because yeah. you see, a yeah. lot. You're right. I mean, because a lot of it was down to the right? famous bus. You yeah. know, this yeah. 350 yeah. million, mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. know, which was promised. And was that real? Did people really have access mm -hmm. to the view mm -hmm. that, in fact, that number wasn't accurate, yeah. and that even if it was accurate, that they couldn't actually yeah. do that? Yeah. Uh, you know, they couldn't just transfer that money straight over. It was very simplistic stuff, really, yeah. wasn't it? But you know, like you could develop scenarios which are a bit exaggerated to, you know, to basically mm. show a strong different point of view. Like I don't know. You could visualize the future where uh, people from Britain have to go to another queue at the airport, for instance, mm. you know, or the planes cannot cross the country. But whatever way you do it, that's kind of propaganda, isn't it? You know. No, no. But if you could have like different, different propagandas from mm. from either side, you know, yeah, like for and against it, and then people can, you know, make up their point, their 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 kind of a view based on few extreme views, you know. Well, that, that's not a bad one, actually, because you know? if you're talking yeah. about a referendum, I yeah. suppose you've got the Leave side and yeah. the Remain side. Yeah. So potentially the Remainers could yeah. put their version. Yeah. You could have a number of different steps, yeah. you know, uh, mm. through the process, as yeah. it were. And the Remainers could put their arguments and then the Leavers could put theirs yeah, at like, each stage. You know, I think it would be a bit like you have those debate online systems. They are not very popular, but there's several mm. out there and people put their arguments you know, mm. a bit like wiki style, and mm. then they can respond to those arguments. So, and that would be actually in a way of interactive video. Uh, so exactly you say, like the people for uh, for Brexit put their scenarios and people against Brexit put their scenarios. And, you know, and, and let then, people then play, allow people to choose. To choose and play one? and see, see how it goes. So, you know, uh, so of course, as I say, there will be maybe bias, there will be a bit of uh, propaganda there. Yeah. But that's but as long as you have a yeah. balanced propaganda yeah, yeah. in both directions, just, it, it just probably works quite well. And make people aware of you know implications of decision making. So uh, I think yeah, exactly. This this uh, this innovation shown here uh, is very interesting from the perspective of uh, the viewer. Uh, for the first time, you are not a passive observer mm -hmm. of what the director decided. Yeah, but people are actually interacting yeah. in yeah. something that's happening. Yeah. And and that's really the point you're making, isn't yeah. it? Sort of. A, I suppose you're looking at interactive mm -hmm. governance, mm -hmm. um, whereas this what this was about was purely in, mm -hmm. interactive entertainment mm -hmm. and how it could be applied. It's it's interesting. I mean, I think I think you're leaping way ahead of where most people are because I mean, yeah. most people have watched Bandersnatch. There's a lot of people very interested in drawing these graphs mm -hmm. and having a look at how it you know affected the 
yeah. entertainment. So we actually have a graph behind, and there's a comment as well. I think. In, uh, okay, I've got the comments from from Manel actually. <laughs> Ah, stop scaring people. <laughs> stop scaring people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we, we, we were very... Uh, scary? No, no, no. Well, I don't know. I think we could be quite scary, yeah. 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 So. Loman <laughs> <laughs> uh, Comment acknowledged. So if you see behind us, you know, we have uh, an IGN uh, website. We see there is a several uh, decision trees, for instance, that people constructed based on the episode from Netflix. And uh, so you see that can give you a bit of a glimpse on how this kind of uh, interactive video is constructed. So you have many choices and they lead to different endings and there are loops that you cannot, uh, you know, break sometimes, right? Mm. And uh, and how does it relate? To, you mentioned you because you, you actually you it was it's, it's close to your heart because you were a programmer. I was one of those yeah. geeks in the yeah, in yeah. the in the bedroom in 80s, doing a yeah, yeah. yeah. And back in those days, yeah, you know, an individual could actually yeah. come up with a video game, and that's in fact how most of them were designed mm -hmm, and produced. Mm -hmm. So it gave a sort of different type mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. sort of flavor to a video game, uh -huh. you know, and and it. A lot of people are actually going back and playing retro games mm -hmm. because these days, I mean, games are so stylized and they're so mm -hmm. full of technology. And but, but these are sort of more <clears throat> basic, guttural type of games, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that really, that that whole thing brought me right back. I mean, I can't say that that's what I was like. I mean, I wasn't yeah. killing my dad, <laughs> you know, or anything like that. Oh, no, spo sorry, spoilers, spoiler, spoiler, spoilers. spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's I. It wasn't as dramatic, but I mean, it, it was sort of mixing up the whole. Mm. area of I suppose depression in the 80s mm. and uh, you know how it led to the creation of a video game so it was a really interesting um, mm. scenario I think and I think that part of the scenario was developed as a result of the type of game that many people were developing mm. and that's what the Bandersnatch game that he was developing was. So, so I had actually a question so what were these games like because I say you have a first-hand mm. experience so how, how do you relate those games where you had to make the decision as kind of means of simulation in relation to the to the to the video in which you decide about things, so what's there? Yeah, because I do remember these. I mean, yeah. what mm -hmm. the the first sort of adventure games mm -hmm. sort of started as purely text based, mm -hmm. you know, and you'd say if you pick up the the rod or the mm -hmm. the wand, you know, which sort of path do you go down? Do you mm -hmm. go left or do you go right? And you know, you mm -hmm. go through these mm -hmm. different scenarios, mm -hmm. and you have to find the treasure by mm -hmm. going through a different path, and you have to ask it the right question to the guardian or something, oh, you know. Okay. So it was text-based, and then they started bringing in um, pictures, mm -hmm. you know, just just st um, still pictures. And then, of course, you started getting, I suppose, a level of cartoons. Mm -hmm. And then it started being more interactive. And, I mean, if you see some of the games today, mm -hmm. um, you know, are based, uh, like The Legend of Zelda, for example, uh -huh. is, is, is sort of similar to this. Mm -hmm. But it's very much more interactive, and it's very much more... Um, you know, it's it's much more visual. Mm -hmm. So I suppose you know th this sort of type of game where you're going on an adventure mm -hmm. and you make decisions along the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, it, it works very well. It's mm -hmm. it's something that kind of we we've lost a bit. I mean, uh, the wonder of those um, mm -hmm. at the time yeah. was extraordinary. So I think I think our suggestion or maybe prediction uh, is that uh, probably we'll make a, a cycle here. I think from the interactive movies, you might go back to kind of more simulation like environments maybe in mm. VR or somewhere where uh, the different scenarios you know could be simulated maybe like you know mm. like the decisions the cities have to make the city hall for instance developing this developing that uh, you know uh, maybe that could be simulated in VR and then people make decisions and I can imagine all the politicians <laughs> sitting down with their video players and pressing the buttons yeah. no no but if, if it could be simulated with various options and then people can witness how the whole thing develops yeah you know, um, maybe not in an instant, but you know, in a matter of minutes, as it unfolds in the you know virtual simulation, uh, that could be something. You know. Well, we've thrown out a lot of ideas there today, yeah. Lucas. So I hope you know that the Cop the government right. of Ireland are watching Copyright. anyway, and the European <laughs> Commission, no, no. whoever. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, these are ideas, and uh, if you if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, we are open. But yeah, I mean, definitely, I think something to explore, and maybe we'll be able to. Uh, to seek for grants <laughs> for for studies because I think this is something worth to study. It's a, it's an emerging domain, yeah. And uh, like we we uh, we do research now, uh, we engage in the research in VR. But I think bridging those two, you know, this kind of decision making. And yeah, because one making, thing is very true that yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, I suppose visualization and and yeah. being able to relate to things visually is mm. is is a very big, mm. very 
strong tool in terms of decision making. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's a much better way of decision making for many people. Many people can't simply relate to text in newspapers. That's true. Like Do when I know? when I when I see those systems again, I mentioned the debate systems, and you have you have to make decision or a poll, and it's just text. You are kind of you're not emotionally attached in any no. way. You're no. Just, yes, because yes, no, because no, because because that's the way I feel. But mm. if you see a video or something interactive and you can kind of relate yourself to the character, uh, not the people, uh, not the people because it's scary, <laughs> it's characters, right? Uh, then your decision will be uh, much more sincere. You know? Yeah. Because suddenly you yeah. can relate to the... I'm probably the, much the, better informed. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, I think we all relate yeah. better to the mm. visual than mm. we do and, and to the sort of verbal and the visual. Mm than we do to the, you know, just to the written word. Mm -hmm. Because the written word quite often can be interpreted in so many different ways, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. whereas, whereas the you get the whole sort of range of emotions and everything mm -hmm. when it comes down to, um, you know, video, um, video data, I suppose. So the visual stimuli, and I think, actually that's part of my research, personal research, mm -hmm. where I try to mm -hmm. say that the text is not the best medium for uh, for politics, for mm. debates, mm. and we see there is a lot of uh, hatred and polarization of discussions uh, on social media and all kind of various uh, text-based solutions, and uh, and that's because of the lack of expressivity in text and lack mm. of this uh, how to say the link, the attachment, emotional attachment mm. to text, right? And when we see the image, when we see the visualization, and uh, ideally if we have characters that we can relate to. Mm -hmm. That's a different ball game, and the same I think with simulation. So if we can also map it to VR and make it much more flexible, and uh, you know even more interactive, and and you know not like you have just one, two options, but maybe twenty, fifty, mm -hmm. you know like almost all possible options, right? And and you can see how the things unfold as they are simulated. That's something uh, I think we look forward. Yes, and I hope yeah. we just don't scare Manel and other people uh, <laughs> too much. You know, I, I think yeah. we're not. It's not about scaring. It's about exploring no, ideas. It's about exploring. I, I think uh, engaging people more mm. uh, into uh, into tasks which require decision making. Because I yeah. think I think uh, in the history of democracy, over time we learned that we delegate those responsibilities to to the government to to people out yeah. there, and you know we are just uh, passive watchers and. And we complain. We complain that something went wrong and so on, but you know we didn't get involved. But here we see, uh, through entertainment, we somehow try to make people, you know, engage. And I think that's the beauty of it. Maybe through entertainment, through this kind of enjoyable interface, we will be able to change the mindset mm. uh, of people to to get involved, whether into the uh, fictional scenario and uh, through fictional scenario to real, uh, real matters, uh, real important problems and eventually make the decision making better. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think there's a long way to go yet, Lucas, yeah. but it's, it's, it's a very interesting and very embryonic sort of um, way of both entertainment and many other possibilities of, as we've discussed here today. So uh, if, if you find a relevant call uh, in EU funding, or maybe if there's <laughs> some uh, commissioners watching us, uh, we'll be looking forward to maybe do research and uh, create an example uh, Interactive video interactive for, for, important, for important mm. matter. I don't know mm. uh, wh whichever it would be uh, migration or any of the uh, current mm. uh, current uh, challenges that, that that the government is facing. Right. So yeah, uh, yeah we look forward <laughs> if you if you if you are able to to to, pro to provide us. Uh, uh, yeah, and well done to Black work. Mirror for, for opening up this amazing discussion yeah. that we've had here today. Yeah, so amazing, amazing work from Netflix and the team from Black Mirror, uh, you know, really well done. And we hope to see more of that, no? Yeah. Definitely. So that was Eagle of New, uh, Eagle's News uh, Friday talk. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, it was disclosed already that the next one, next session will be on a virtual reality. And that's why we also relate uh, here uh, to a virtual reality because, uh, let's face it, VR is the next big thing, no? Absolutely. And but more of that uh, next week. So stay tuned and uh, thank you very much for today and uh, have a nice weekend. Thank you very much. Bye bye.